Hi there guys, it's Narandio here. Today we're going to be continuing our Agere grammar series looking at nouns. Last time we looked at the first and second declensions and today we're going to be looking at the third and fourth declensions. So let's get stuck into it. Here we have the example pirabe, which is a noun belonging to the third declension in the nominative pirabe, vocative pirabe, Accusative piraber, genitive pirabio, dative pirabeve, instrumental pirabive. You'll notice if you compare the nominative singular and plural that they're exactly the same because the third declension is marked by its syncretism. This doesn't happen in the accusative, so you have the difference between piraber and piraber, and in the dative, the singular is pirabeve, the plural is pirabive. If the nominative singular and nominative plural are exactly the same, how can you tell them apart? There's an interesting rule that affects third declension nouns that doesn't affect other nouns called the forward stress rule. The forward stress rule tells us that for the nominative, vocative, genitive, and instrumental, which are identical in the singular and plural, the singular will have the stress where you expect it to fall, and the plural will have the stress where you expect it to fall, but forward towards the end of the word by one syllable. Here I have marked the stress syllable with an acute accent, so the nominative pirabe, the plural Pirabe. The genitive singular pirabio, genitive plural pirabio. The instrumental singular pirabive, the instrumental plural pirabive. Why is that the case? The stress rules for agere are a bit complex to get into in this video, so I'll leave a link in the description to direct you to my agere conlang showcase, which deals with this in far more detail. But there are historical reasons why the forward stress rule applies for third declension nouns and only third declension nouns. In norasse, final long vowels made heavy syllables. So heavy syllables are those that I refer to in my conlang showcase video where they receive two mori. So the singular beulore, which means brother, had the plural beulore, the last syllable is short, lo is also short, beu must then be the one that takes the stress. What happens in the plural, because you have a long a ending for the plural of first declension nouns, that counts as a long syllable. So if either of the final two syllables are long, then the stress will fall to the second last syllable. So it's not beulore, it's beulore, because the long vowel forces the stress to come forward one syllable. So this is now a marker in the first declension of the difference between the singular beulore, brother, and beulore, brothers. This spreads by analogy to the third declension, which is an identical singular and plural, pirabe and pirabe. So in the same way that the stress moves forward one in the first declension plural, it does the same thing in the third declension plural. So this is grammatical analogy. Stress movement is a marker of plurality in the first declension, so it also becomes a marker of plurality in the third declension. Pirabe for the singular and pirabe with the stress moved for the plural. Then what ends up happening is that final long vowels are no longer considered heavy, so beulore becomes beulore. So the only difference in the first declension is whether the final a is short for the singular or long for the plural, but because the third declension plural never had a long vowel to begin with, the syllable was never heavy to begin with, so it can't become unheavy. That's why you have a difference between pirabe and pirabe. You also have quite a few words in the third declension which end in s in the singular but have a separate stem for the oblique forms. So lepis, which means gold, has the genitive lebrio, and the stem is therefore lebre. Plural for lepis is irregular. Lepis coin, lepis coins. A lot of these words stem from words in Barazni Fewa that took the suffix si, which means instrument or tool. We've seen in the first, second, and third declensions that you can sometimes have nouns that have a stem form with an irregular nominative singular. What happened at some point in the history of Agere is that some of these nouns had stems that were so different, one was interpreted as a singular stem and the other was interpreted as a plural stem. So you have words like agele, which means diamond, with a plural stem, agirate. Every form in the singular will use one stem, and every form in the plural will use a different stem. The reason that these are described as being the fourth declension is because they split from the third declension. The same thing didn't happen in the first and second declensions, so they take the typical third declension singular and plural endings. However, they don't undergo syncretism, so the forward stress rule doesn't apply to the fourth declension, only to the third. And that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think the third and fourth declensions are my favourite declensions because they just combine together a few little quirks, the forward stress placement, syncretism, um, the effect of, you know, historical change 
splitting the third and fourth declensions. It's all just very interesting. So in the next video, I'm going to be looking at the fifth declensions or all three of them. What do I mean? Stay tuned and find out.